Hi, my name is John Race and I run the Northwest Mountain School and I wanted to put together a quick video to show my clients uh, what they're going to carry in their pack on the Hoat route and to just kind of review the gear real quick. There's a couple key items that people consistently uh, don't discover until they get Chamonix and it's a lot cheaper to buy that stuff uh, here in the U.S. than once we're in Europe. So I'm going to run through the gear real quick. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to either start at the feet and move up towards my head or do the reverse. So starting at the feet, I carry uh, two pairs of ski socks. A pair that I wear and then a pair that I have on when I'm skiing each day. I like to carry one very light, like short sock just to wear around in the huts. That's kind of a luxury item, but nice to have. And then, of course, I have my ski boots. Uh, the lighter, the better. These are the Sportiva Spitfires, and those have worked really well. And then uh, moving up from there uh, to my bottom layers, I've got usually a spare pair of boxers, uh, synthetic long underwear or wool long underwear. I wear real lightweight stuff. And then a high quality synthetic ski pant with a belt. And I add the belt, but these are Patagonia Alpine Guide Pants and uh, these work incredibly well. And then I also have uh, a pair of Gore-Tex pants with full side zips. The lighter the better. Uh, next up from that I take a synthetic t-shirt and what I like about that is this thing can get really uh, stinky during the day and then I can take it off and get away from it and then right on top of that I've got a lighter weight synthetic or wool long underwear top and then uh, this is like a, what we used to call expedition weight this particular thing is called a Piton, and it's uh, essentially a heavyweight long underwear top with a hood. An R1 hoodie would be similar. And then uh, next out would be a soft shell with a hood. And that's what I'm often going to ski in. And then I've got a either like a very light fleece jacket or I like these lightweight down jackets because they're super compressible. This is Patagonia's lightest down jacket. Good insulation layer. And then finally, uh, something like a, this is called a micro puff, but just a layer that I can put on over everything else if I'm waiting for the rest of the group to mess with their gear or if somebody gets hurt. Um, so that's my outer layer. I will sometimes take a lightweight Gore-Tex jacket. Again, it's got to be something that really, really compresses. But if there is pre-sip in the forecast, I occasionally feel a little bit nervous just having my soft shell. And then moving out to the hands, I've got usually two pairs of gloves, like a medium weight. This was a glove that OR makes called the Extrovert. And then I have a uh, black diamond, I think they actually call these the guide glove, but a heavier glove so that if I'm going over like the Pin de Arola, I, uh, you know, have something good and warm for my hands. Um, I take a warm hat and I take a neck gaiter, something like a buff, and I use that for wind protection on my face if it's cold out, or I'll wear it around my head to protect me from the sun and uh, absorb sweat if it's really sunny and I'm not wearing a hood. I've also got a pair of really good dark glacier glasses and a good pair of ski goggles with their case. Um, other items that I take is a lightweight ski harness with a locking carabiner for the harness and then I usually have another uh, non-locking beaner that I'll use to do things like clip my crampons onto my pack, my ski crampons, and things like that. Um, in this bag is all of my miscellaneous stuff, which would be like my toothbrush, my small toothpaste, 
my extra batteries. I've got a very small headlamp. Uh, all this is detailed in our equipment list. But earplugs, a small headlamp for the huts, uh, headphones for my iPhone. That's how big my headlamp is. That's a Petzl Zipka. Um, and then ski repair kit. Uh, the guides usually carry one, but if you had a few items for things specific to your bindings, that would be great. And then my skins. And really important thing with the skins is you notice I don't have the little bag that the skins come in, and I don't have the backing for the skins. Like I'll just simply carry them like this on the trip, and it makes it a lot easier uh, to use them if you don't have all that extra stuff. And then I have a pair of crampons, and I've actually put the tines of the crampons together, bound the crampons up, and then they fit in this nice little cloth pouch. And that's going to allow me to put the crampons inside my pack. A liter of water, one or two liters will usually do the trick. I've already covered the beacon, shovel, and probe. And so now what we need to do is figure out how to put all this stuff in the pack. One thing I did skip is I bring a pair of skis. I'm going to use the La Sportiva GT this year. It's a 184. That ski's only 89 underfoot. It's very lightweight. I've got a Sportiva binding on it, but a Dinafit would be a comparable binding. And you'll notice that I have a ski strap that I use to attach my poles to the ski. And that allows me, when I get on the gondolas, to uh, carry everything in one hand and have my other hand free to hold my backpack. Now when I go to pack my pack, uh, probably the easiest way to think about this is what absolutely won't be in the pack on any day, any given day. And as an example, I'm going to wear, every day I'm going to wear my harness, I'm going to wear my ski boots, and got another pair of socks there with the ski boots. And then my basic ski clothing is usually going to be the long underwear bottoms, the synthetic pants and then on top of that I'll usually have my synthetic t-shirt and then I'll have my long underwear top and let's just say it's a beautiful beautiful day so I have almost nothing on I'll probably have something like this piton or R1 hoodie type thing and the key being that all the rest of this stuff has to fit into my pack. And the worst case scenario is if I'm on the gondola, I need to fit all this stuff in my pack. And that includes the ice axe, the shovel, the probe, all those sorts of things. And so I'm going to show you where I put my probe. This pack has a separate interior pocket. Notice I don't have the pouch for the probe. I don't need it. So I just slide that in the pocket there. Shovel handle goes there. Got a nice metal shovel. It's actually going to help me dig as opposed to one of those Lexan shovels. And this all lives in a completely separate compartment. So that if I take it out and use it uh, to check snow depths or, or dig a pit or something, I can put it back in my pack and not get everything wet. Or if there's a rescue and I need to get it out quickly, it's very accessible. These items cannot be strapped onto the outside of your pack in any circumstances. They have to be in your backpack. Uh, and that's just a safety thing. Okay, and then getting the ice axe in the pack, you kind of need to start with the right ice axe. This is a Petzl Snow Racer. It's very light. It's 50 centimeters long. And I can actually place it with the spike down in my backpack and there'll still be room to close it. And by having the spike down I can pull it out whereas if it was upside down it would get stuck underneath my clothes. So I put that in my pack and then on different days we're going to need access to different things. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and put these in uh, the way that I would carry them for example on the first day which would be maybe uh, down deep in the pack I'm going to put 
my sleep sack for the hut. I didn't mention that I also often will carry just a light t-shirt, cotton t-shirt to wear in the hut. So all this hut related stuff I'm going to put in the very bottom of the pack. And then uh, I need to prioritize what goes in next. Oftentimes I'll put the shell layers a little bit deeper. So I'll go ahead and stick those guys down near the bottom. And then my uh, spare pair of socks, I'm going to go ahead and put those in. And then my crampons I'm going to want to get to during the day, so I'm going to stick them on the side and in a vertical orientation so I can pull them out. And then, uh, let's see, that's going to go on the top lid. My ski repair kit I put down in the pack on the other side. And then this bag that I didn't mention, this is a bunch of food, but I oftentimes will keep it in something like that so I know where it is. I'm going to save that for a little bit later. And now I'm going to just kind of put things in in the order that I think I'll need them. So I'm going to put my puffy layers in so they're near the top but still accessible. My extra gloves will go in near the top. And uh, my light, lighter gloves I'm going to be wearing. And then sunglasses, neck gaiter, hat, I'll probably be wearing those. Um, my goggles I need to protect so those will go in the top lid. One nice trick with your crampons, your ski crampons, is you can take them and bend them a little bit and stick them together and oftentimes they'll fit nicely over your water bottle. So I can put that in there and then I uh, got my soft shell which I may need or may not need but it's nice and handy and then I'm going to put that food in there and then uh, last but not least I'll need my skins to go right in the top of the pack so you see all that fits comfortably oh still got to put some things in the top of my pack so here in my top lid I've got all those loose small odds and ends and then I also put my ski goggles in there and then I carry a ziplock with my cash, my passport and my credit cards and sometimes I'll actually bury that down deep in the pack there's a little pocket down in there or put it in the top lid of my pack it's good to split that stuff up so that if you lose uh, you know something like your pack or if you, you know you'd still have some cash and a credit card something like that in a different pocket so sometimes I'll carry a little bit of that in my pants pocket so then I zip this whole thing up and I'm gonna wear my beacon on my body and so then when I put the pack on I've got the skis in one hand with the ski strap um, I'm able to carry everything and get onto the gondola and notice that I don't have anything on the outside of the pack that uh, is sharp that could hurt somebody if I were, for example, in a tram. So I think that's about it. And feel free to fire us an email if you have any questions. Thanks.